So recently I've had a surprisingly uh, large amount of people ask me if I know of a way of how to run wires from the passenger compartment of these cars to the engine compartments. It's not your typical scenario where you can do this pretty easily like on a lot of other cars where you could just find some way to poke holes through the firewall and get up to the engine in the front if you were running power or whatever the case may be. A lot of times people would typically do this type of thing on uh, some older cars if they were running something like some sort of extra gauge or a wideband O2 or uh, maybe some lighting or something like that. But um, nonetheless, it's something that uh, a pretty good amount of people have actually asked me about. How do you, how can you run wires to the uh, engine compartment? So I guess the only thing I can think of that people would want to do this for is for uh, car shows and things like that, for lighting and things like that. So um, there are a few ways to do it. Um, they're not, you're not going to like any of them, I'm not going to lie to you, because there's basically two ways to do it. Either there's a quick way or there's the right way. Um, the right way is not quick and the quick way is not right. But um, if you want to do it properly and professionally, I'll show you how to do it. It is involved, but I'll also show you a quicker way how to do it too in case you just want to do something temporarily or real quick or whatever. Um, so anyways, I'll show you how to do it. So like I said, there are a couple of ways to do it, and there's slight different variations on every way you can do it, either on the driver's side of the car or the passenger side of the car, whichever way you're going to do it. And depending on what kind of car you have and how it's equipped will kind of dictate on which side of the car you're going to work on. So the first way I'm going to show you how to do it is the proper way, or the way that is more professional, it's going to hide things out of the way, they're going to be more secure, more safe, and things that you should do. It is going to take a while to do, and it is much more difficult and much more involved, but it is the proper way to do it. So when I narrow this down, there's basically one thing that you have to ask, is the car a, a Z51 car or not? reason for that is because on the Z51 cars, as we know, we have an auxiliary cooler on the uh, passenger side intake of the car. Now that cooler is going to kind of get in the way a little bit. Um, and it's not something that's easily removable for you to kind of uh, feed wires through wherever you're, when you're, where I show you where you're going to poke them through. But um, so for that case, I'm going to say do it on the driver's side. Now this is a Z51 car, so I'm going to show you how to do things on the driver's side. Um, on the passenger side, it's basically just mirrored. You do the same thing, just do it on the other side. Um, with the exception of when you get into the wheel well. Uh, there's, nothing, there's not really that much for you to remove in there because, like I said, that auxiliary cooler is not there. So take that into account also. So um, with anything, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, there is a fuse box in the center right there, and there, there is a pass-through through the firewall. Now, for this video's purposes, I'm going to refer to the firewall as the wall in between the passenger compartment and the engine compartment, because that typically is what the firewall is called. So if I say firewall, don't think I'm talking about that. I'm talking about this, okay? So that being said, the first thing we want to do is get to the pass-through, uh, which is against the back of your seat by the firewall back there. And you got to remove some of the stuff inside here to get to it. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Now to get to where you need to get to in here, there's basically a master connector on each side that kind of goes through the firewall into the engine compartment. It's going to be one that's tucked down in the corner right here, and there's going to be a mirrored one equivalent over on the passenger side. So what you have to do is get this carpet out, and you have to get some of these trim pieces out to get that piece of carpet up and out of the way. Now, first thing you want to do is just move your seat forward and move it all the way up. Um, if you really want to go crazy on this, if you want to take the seat out of the car, it will make things a lot easier. I'm going to leave the seat in because I'm going to show you that it can be done with leaving the seat in the car. It is a little more difficult, obviously, with the tighter quarters, but you can make it work. The other thing that I am going to point out, too, and I know this is a big thing of mine whenever I say any videos, is that right now the battery is connected. I have not disconnected the battery. So keeping that in mind, anytime I take anything out of here, I'm not going to disconnect anything electrical with the exception of one speaker, that middle one right there, and that's it. That one is not going to cause a code or anything to be thrown. It's not going to give me a problem. But there's going to be like that wireless charger down there. I'm going to leave that connected. I'm going to leave everything else connected throughout the entire video because I don't have the battery disconnected. So. Keep that in mind, again, if you're going to disconnect anything electrical, just remember to disconnect the battery first. So keeping that in mind, what I'm going to do here to get started is that ultimately we've got to get this carpet right here out. So this piece has to come out, and in order to get this piece out, this piece has to come out, and the top has to come out, and then the center has to come out for you to get to it. It's basically a series of clips and pries. I'm going to show you how to get them out right now. Uh, again, these are going to fight you quite a bit. These clips on these cars, as we've seen before, are pretty strong. 
So um, I'm going to show you how to unclip everything and get to the connector that you need to get to to pass through. It ultimately goes down into the wheel well almost kind of, but I'm going to show you uh, how to get to that in a little bit. Okay, so to get to where I need to get to, the first thing I'm going to do is pop out this center waterfall and the center speaker here. Now, as far as tools that you're going to need in order to get some of this stuff out right here, you're really not going to need much. Plastic tri uh, plastic uh, trim piece tool, a little panel popper if you have it, and then I always like to keep a little right angle pick and a little small flathead screwdriver handy because usually that's I come across something that I'm going to need. So these these come out real easily. It's just these four clips. Pull up. And you pull these up. Again, mine's gonna come out a lot easier because I've taken them apart a bunch of times. Yours might not come out as easily. You're gonna have to force it a little bit. And the waterfall, just the four clips right there. Again, just pull on them and it comes right out. Now on this, I'm gonna disconnect this top speaker right here and take that one out. This one's always a little bit because you can't really see it. A little bit of a pain. But comes up. Okay. Now the wireless charger, I'm gonna leave that connected again because I don't have the battery disconnected. And if I disconnect that, believe it or not, it's gonna set a code. So now I move on to over here. Okay. So now I gotta get this center piece up. I don't have to pull the thing necessarily all the way up, but um, we'll just get it up out of place. And this is just a series of clips. Now, like I said, this is going to fight you quite a bit. So what I like to do is start over here. If you reach underneath here, you can feel the first clip right about there, right here. And when you reach that, just pull that up. It is going to fight you. But then at that point, you can put your hands underneath and you can start to kind of work your way over to get these up. Now I have that up out of the way. And I'm gonna leave this side in for now, just because I'm only really gonna be working on this side for right now. Then I gotta work and I gotta get this piece out right here. Now this piece has a series of clips. You got uh, two of them down here and one of them up here. And then there's a center one right here and there's another one right here that kind of holds it in. Again, they're gonna be very strong but you're gonna kind of see it has to come out in a very certain way. I'm gonna show you how right now. So on this particular one, start about right here. There's gonna be one clip right there and that's gonna be the one you're gonna be able to see to be able to get it out. So just stick your trim panel, uh, plastic pry tool in and work your way up, okay? Now, actually, if you go down here, you might be able to see that one too, okay? So lift it up, what I like to do is get that, just get a little bit of a purchase, stick my finger underneath. And then from there, you can look in about right here where that bottom edge is, you can look in, you can see the clip right there. Reach in there and try to use this piece on this little pry side, works a little better. Just give it a pop and out it comes, okay? Now you'll also see that there's one down here, I'll show you in a second, but then there's a third one up here. Just go ahead and work your tool up there and pop that one out as well. Once you have all three of those out, just kind of squeeze them out of the way a little bit, and now you have this disconnected. Here's a little bit of a better view of the clip. So here's that top one you can see. It goes in right there, okay? There's the clip, it's already out, and then there's the hole that it goes into. On the bottom, you have that clip right there, which is that one, and then you have another one on the inside, right in there, that one right there, and that goes to that slot right there. So all three of those have to go in. So you've got one kind of coming in this way, and the top on there going the same way, and the top going the same way. But because there's this little lip right here, you're going to have to like pull it back and then lift it up and over the lip. Now you still have two clips on the inside, and I'll show you how to get those right now. Okay, now here's this section. There's going to be a clip down here and a big clip in here. I'm not going to lie, getting this back in is going to be a pain because you have to line up kind of these two first and then work your way out here. I'll show you how to get it back in a little bit. You usually want to start with the top because that one you can see. This is how you get it out. First, you got to get this top piece out though because this connects into the top piece. This actually overlaps into this and then clips into the roof. So, all you got to do, go up there, 
Got a little purchase. You'll feel them and just work your way over and they will pop out. Okay. Again, you don't need to take the thing all the way out. You just have to get enough to be able to wiggle it out of the way. I'm not going to take it all the way out. Now, now that I have this bottom out, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to give it a good yank because you can kind of go in underneath here and you can feel it's like all the way up here and just pull it all out. Okay, and out it comes. Again, mine came out easier than yours probably is because I've taken this out once or twice before. So once you have that out, you're just going to kind of have to finagle it a little bit with that piece and then get it past this piece and move it up out of the way. And out it comes. Now I still have a speaker down here. I'll disconnect that speaker, just a red locking tab and a little gray pin. And this is why I always keep that picking that screwdriver handy that I was talking about. To disconnect the speaker. Just to help get it out of the way a little bit more. Okay. Now, I'm not going to be able to take the thing all the way out, obviously, because the seatbelt is still run through. But what I can do is just take it and run it to the front right there. And it even kind of helps keep the seatbelt a little bit out of the way. Now, here's what you're going to have to get to right here. And this is your main thing. I'll show you exactly where the connection goes through right now. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, you're just going to have to pull the carpet back a little bit. The carpet is going to be stiff, so don't, don't worry. Now, underneath there, it is going to be tucked underneath that plastic piece, that plastic trim right there. You don't have to remove that trim. Just give the carpet a stern little pull and you'll get it out of the way. Okay, it will come out just like that. Okay, now at this point you can obviously see how the wires are routed. Here is a main harness that comes through. It's all connected. It goes into the back of the fuse box. And uh, there is obviously a mirror connection on the other side that the other side does the same thing. Okay, so if you follow that down, it kind of goes down here and it goes into that compartment right there where you have that little insulation. Pull that insulation, comes right out, okay? And that in there is going to be where your connection is. Okay, so now with the carpet pulled back, you can kind of get a little bit more of an expanded view. Here is where the seatbelt is. And just to give you some reference, go all the way down. And then there's that little cavity where I took that um, insulation out of before. That connector right there, the big massive one right there, that is your pass through okay obviously you can tell there's a whole ton of wires that go through there right there and it's going to go through on the other side of the car right there now i'm not going to lie to you that is going to be a, a difficult thing to pass wires through here but what's difficult is going to be what's best now the last thing you need to do and I will tell anybody, don't you dare start doing this, is a lot of people are just going to be tempted to start drilling holes right here. Well, remember, the engine's on the other side of the car. But more importantly, not only is the engine right there, and there's a bunch of vital detrimental things, there's also the fuel tank. Remember, it's a two-sided fuel tank or a two-part tank where you have half the tank over here and half the tank on the other side, and then there's a crossover underneath. If you drill through and you hit something on the fuel tank, you've got a world of trouble. So... Do not do that. Whatever you do, do not do that. Please, please, please. So, but there is your pass through right there to get through. Now it is going to be a big giant wire, uh, excuse me, rubber grommet, and you can pass through your wires right there. And obviously whatever connections you need to get to, take your pick on what you want to get through through the uh, fuse block right there. So once you have that passed through, then you're going to have to go to the other side of the car in the wheel well underneath in there, where I'm going to show you how to get to that access point right now. So with that out of the way, that's how you're going to pass through wires, uh, whether you're going from the passenger compartment into the uh, engine, or if you want to do it the other way around, depending on what you're running, how you're running. You know, you can just use whatever you need to do to fish it through. So next time I'm going to show you where I'm going to take off the wheel here, and I'm going to show you how to get to the back side of that connector down there from the inside of like a wheel well kind of in there. You're going to see on the inside of the car, there's kind of like a white shoulder that goes around the, the black connector. You're going to see it's a black oval connector. That white shoulder is what snaps it into place. So, and that is going to be the same connector that I just showed you. 
Um, before you run any wires, I would say test it with something. Use like a thin piece of coat hanger or something, or or if you have a piece of wood or something soft, something that's going to be non-marring, non-damaging, just to see where the wire is going to come through and how it's going to get through. So now the other thing I'm going to tell you is that I'm not actually going to run any wires in this video. Reason being is because I don't have anything to run. I don't have any wires that I have to pass through or anything that I'm trying to do. I don't have any extra engine lights or anything like that that I'm running. I, I really know that is something that I want. So I'm not actually going to remove that connector and run wires through, but I'm going to show you exactly where it is in case you want to do it. So just like anything else, when you're working around a harness that big, just be extremely careful. Um, don't use anything that you're going to drill or cut anything up or accidentally cut those wires. Because man, if you cut those wires right there and you cut a whole bunch of them and now you have a whole bunch of shaped wires or something, that is just going to be a world of a headache to fix. Um, and if you're not really mechanically inclined, or if you're not basically a full blown uh, mechanic, you're not going to be able to fix that on your own. You're going to have to take it to the dealership and they're going to charge you an unbelievable amount to get to that and fix it. They may even want to replace the whole harness, to be honest with you. So, but, so just be extremely careful when you're doing stuff like this. To be honest with you, I'm actually going to advise against a lot of this stuff, but you guys are asking for it, so I'm going to show you how to do it or how it can be done, rather. Um, so, uh, so just take that with a grain of salt. Um, again, I'm not going to be running anything, so, but this, these are just the locations on how it goes through. Okay, so this is the next step you're going to have to do. Now, if you happen to have a Z51 car, uh, the easier side I'm going to say to do this on is going to be the driver's side. Uh, if you happen to have a non-Z51 car, I would say maybe go ahead and check out the passenger side because the passenger side is not going to have that auxiliary cooler in place that uh, the Z51 does. No. So one more thing I want to throw in while I was editing this and I thought of it. <clears throat> it's kind of minor. It's going to apply to a very uh, few select people but um, so when I mentioned doing the routing through the driver's side because there's less stuff in the way that obviously does not apply if you're one of the few lucky people that happens to have a pro charger kit on your car because that's where the uh, intercooler goes the, uh, the excuse me the heat exchanger goes to for the um, uh, air to water intercooler system so if you do have a pro charger kit on your car you're gonna have to deal with that extra um, uh, heat exchanger in the way so I obviously can't show you that because I don't have a pro charger kit on my car if somebody out there wants to donate one to me I will gladly install it and I'll gladly make a video on how to install it um, but uh, if I have one on there I would show you how to do it but obviously this was not applied to a car that has something like that equipped with it so just keep that in mind if you happen to have that in place so this is a Z51 so I went ahead and did it on the driver's side because I don't have that auxiliary cooler in place. However, there is still stuff you got to get in the way, uh, get out of the way. So obviously, jack up the car, get it up. I just did this as a quick little, you know, just to show. And uh, normally I would have this on my lift. But uh, get the car up, get the wheel off, and then get the wheel liner off. And once you have the wheel liner off, there's going to be four T15 screws. One right here, two, three. Oops, my little clip moved over. And then four, there'll be a fourth one up top. Once you have all four of those out of the way, you can kind of peel the wheel liner back if you want, or you can get the whole wheel liner out. Now, you're gonna have a couple of things in the way right off the bat. Uh, first thing, you're gonna have this big grill guard that um, usually sits right here. I already took it out, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you. And then obviously you have the fan right here, okay? I still have it connected, yes, because I still have the battery connected. I don't like disconnecting anything if the battery is still connected. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is get that wheel liner out. Then up, up high, right around uh, here in this area up here, when this thing is back in the car, right? When it sits in, is gonna be that right there. There's a 10 millimeter that holds in the fan. Once you get that 10 millimeter out, it just flops down and there's just the two little spots that it sits in down there. Just uh, fold it out and get it out of the way. Or bring it down like that. If you have the battery disconnected, go ahead and disconnect the fan completely. Uh, but like I said, I don't have it disconnected for that reason. Uh, then this thing, this thing sits in in kind of a, kind of a weird, a little bit of an annoying way. So you have this top part right here and that just sits into this little uh, groove right here, okay? It just goes and it sits in there. Um, now the two bottom parts right down here, the two little rubber uh, pieces right down there, 
those are going to sit into this bracket right down here, okay? That fuel vent line's in the way. There's gonna be those two little holes right there. Now, you're gonna to wanna to be tempted to kinda of just like pull that thing out, but you're, you're not gonna get it. You're gonna to have to loosen up that bracket and take it out. There are three 10 millimeter bolts that hold that bracket in. You can see two of them, right? Let me get a good view of it for you, see if I can. Right. there okay you can see that one on top and the one on the bottom i can't point to it because my hands are full but you'll have those two right there and then there's going to be a third one in the back unfortunately this is a really tight angle and i'm not going to be able to um uh point exactly where they are but uh you'll be able to feel them that top one right there you're not going to be able to see that one from the outside you're just going to kind of have to feel around for it once you feel it get that 10 millimeter out and then there's another one there and then there's another one in the back and uh these are the bolts these are what they look like right here so once you have them uh once you have it still in the car they are fairly visible they're pretty easy to see so get those three 10 millimeters out and that will get that bracket out of the way there and then you can just kind of flip, flip that bracket back and then uh, you can slide the whole thing out the only other thing you're going to have to disconnect is this vent tube right here for the uh the fuel line uh the fuel uh the, the cap so it goes up to the cap it's just a vent tube it goes down it goes to nowhere don't worry about it and now that is going to be held in place by these two little clips that are right here just go ahead and pop those clips and it'll come out then once you got it once you get that you'll wrestle this thing and you'll get it out a little bit now once you have all that out you'll be able to finally see your passageway through okay now here is the only way over here that you're going to get it through so if you look right up in there better view here right there you see that white connector right there behind the fuel tank that is going to be your your passageway through what is equivalent to the firewall there it is right there that white connector it's got a white it's got like a white hub around it so that is what snaps into place into what is the equivalent of the firewall on this car because it being mid-engine, the firewall is considered to be in the back. That is going to be a connector that goes through there and that goes into the, um, uh, the main fuse box inside the car. Uh, and I'll show you that connection inside the car uh, once you get all those panels out. But you see that harness, once you follow it down, um, try to get a big better angle here for you. Once you get that harness and it follows down, that is what goes down into the engine harness, into the whole car. And then once you have that, you've got all this exposed and all this wide open area, and you can run whatever you need to run through. Now, that is pretty much the, the only way that you can do this where you're going to be clean and install something on this car where it's not going to look tacky and terrible. There are other ways to do stuff. And I'll show you how to do it here in a minute, but um, I wouldn't recommend them. This is the um, long way, but it is the proper way. And obviously, when you ever are you are, excuse me, whenever you are running wires through any kind of like firewall or anything like that, when you have a connector that large, there's obviously a very a lot of uh, detrimental wires in there, and uh, you have to be very careful whenever you're running anything through. Don't really go drilling blindly or anything like that in there. and um, But that's really going to be your best way through. Just make sure you route it properly, whatever it is you're running. I can't imagine um, it is. But, uh, you know, whatever it is you're running, just route it properly, secure it properly. Because you've obviously got a lot of things around here that can be detrimental. So uh, that's what it looks like from inside the car. Or excuse me, from inside the engine bay. Sorry, I didn't actually film the process of removing everything. Uh, both of my hands were full, and this is a really tight angle and a really tough place to uh, film. But um, it's really not that difficult, and I feel like the explanation I gave you, you should be able to to be able to piece it together or figure it out how to get it apart. So, One other thing I forgot to mention, that um, behind where all those connectors are right there, right in that area right in there, uh, there is going to be a piece of foam um, kind of insulation in there. Here it is right here. I had already taken it out. I forgot to mention it. Now you're going to find that once it's in there, 
it's really just going to be kind of in there and just stuffed in there. I'm going to stuff it in properly. That is not proper right there. But I am going to put it stuffed in properly when I have two hands free and everything uh, in a second here. And I'll show you. But um, yeah, you're just going to have to grab that and just pull that out too. And that will obviously expose everything. Now, quick little thing too that I'll mention um, when you're reinstalling this, you're going to see once this thing is back into that you might even be able to just sneak the wires through without taking that whole big um, uh, the, the guard out, but uh, you're going to have to take the fan out, but preferably. When you're getting this lower bracket back in, this one right here, do yourself a favor and uh, put the bracket back in. Get that bolt down there, that bottom one, and start that in first. Put a couple of threads in just to get it started. Same thing with that back one back there, okay? Just get the threads started because otherwise you're going to be fighting the... Uh, sorry, I'm going to try and get a good picture of it here. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be fighting the, the actual uh, guard when it's going into place, like the pressure of it sitting in place, just how it sits. And you're going to be kind of trying to push up and push in against the car while trying to get those bolts threaded. It's going to be a real pain in the ass. So just get that one in the back started first and then get that one on the bottom down there started there also. Um, then once you have those two, you can tighten them down and then you'll be able to get that third one, which is that top one right there. So just a little trick to make it a little easier for you. Okay, so here's what it looks like with that radiator guard in, or excuse me, the uh, rock guard in. And that bracket is back in as well, too. And I'm going to tell you that bracket is a, is a pain in the butt to get in. Uh, so if you can avoid taking it out, I would recommend it. But once it's all back in, that's where it is. Now, once it's all back in, you can see you still can get to that uh, that pass-through connector right there. You can see the insulation is in, too. But once uh, when all this stuff is in the way, obviously, it's just going to be a lot harder to make it kind of like tuck it nice and neat and clean and things like that so you know just uh gauge it for yourself whenever you're um doing this work as to whether or not you want to take this guard out this guard right here it is kind of hard to get back in so just uh take that into consideration okay so now i'm going to show you how to get this all back together it's not complicated but there is a little bit of a process to do it so that everything lines up and flush and the way it it looked before you took it apart the only other thing that i'll mention too is that if you are going to run wires uh, if you're going to do it through here Again, do this all at your own risk. Please be careful. Um, I can't stress that enough. Um, but anyways, if you want to uh, get yourself a little bit of extra room in there, you can take the latch out, okay? Now again, if you're gonna disconnect something like this, disconnect the battery. You have to pull the manual cable off because remember there's that manual cable that goes down there, it's the emergency release. And there's a little electrical connector and a couple clips and it just pops right out. And the three uh, T30 bolts that are right here. Now, once you take this cover off right here too, you're also going to think that there might be like access passage through there. There's not. The whole frame of the car is going to block you off anyways. And take it off, you'll see what I mean. But it's not going to give you any more um, uh, room to work. You're still going to have to work completely through here. So if you want to take that uh, actuator, that latch off, it will kind of help you. So that in mind, if you want to put it all back together, first thing you do is take that little insulation and you just stick that back where it came out. Okay. Now, line up your carpet the way it came out. I would say tuck it in underneath this piece because the carpet is going to go, uh, is going to obviously lay first. Underneath here, just pull it back a little bit and you got to get it back behind this trim piece and it'll just tuck right in. Okay. Kind of give it a little bit of like a shift up too when you do it so that way it sits in properly so that way there's not like a big gap here later on when you're putting these pieces back up now we're gonna get this piece back on now you'll see all the clips that hold this in you got one down here one right here and then you got one two three and then there's a fourth one down here this one this one this one those three that i showed you before that go along the ledge right here then there's this bottom one the yellow one and then this one right here is also the yellow one that's going to be the one that you want to put in first okay now uh, that hole is going to be let me see where it lines up it'll be right here okay now take your piece and line it up and get it in there okay so Get this back into place. 
Okay, go underneath that piece. It's gonna have to go underneath that, and it's also gonna have to go underneath the back part of the headliner right here. Now you are gonna to want to make sure you line up this piece off as well too, because otherwise your target top is not going to line up. There's gonna be a little piece of rubber that just kind of goes on top. You'll see exactly what I mean uh, when you're doing it. It's pretty hard to not put it back in correctly, to be honest with you. So once you have all that lined up, I would say look in the side right here, and you're gonna see that yellow clip. It's right here. Reach into it with your hand, and you'll see it line up. Once you have that top one lined up, push that one in. You're gonna feel it. It's not gonna click that much, but you'll feel it once it goes in, okay? Then work your way down, and you'll feel the other one. And you can even look at it from the side as well, too. You'll see when you go in from the side, you'll kind of tuck it in and you'll see it. And then you work your way down to the bottom one, which is right down here, and that will go in as well, too. Then once you have all those in, you're going to want to press those in, and you're going to have to pull this lip kind of up and over, particularly on the top one, because you're not going to get that bottom one to sit in until that lip comes up and over. Once you have all those lined up, then click it, you hear to click, and now you've got all of them in. Then just give everything a good little nudge, and it's all in. Then you feel these, make sure they're lined up. All that clicks in, and the same right here. Line them up first, make sure they're guided in. Okay, and then pop it all down. And then just kind of look over everything, make sure everything lined up. Everything should line up flush, just like it did when it came out. If it's not flush, it's not in right. If that's the case, take it out, try it again, do the same thing. Now, another thing you can do, <clears throat> too, is this one clip right back here to make sure that it's in. You can pop this out. This piece right here kind of hooks in, okay? So grab it right there. And just give it a pull and that'll come right out and you'll see it kind of hooks in from the back of the car so pull it from the front when you like kind of fish hook it in and you can reach in and you can actually feel that one clip right here and i can feel that it's in so the other thing i'll do point out as long as i'm here too is i don't know if you saw there's that little gray connector down here there's this gray connector you could just pull the tab pull it out and you have this one right here um if any of you have ever seen there's a video that uh, Paragon put out, they have a little uh, harness connector that you can plug in where you disconnect this gray connector and just plugs in there and plugs in here. And then what it does is it gives you control over the engine bay lights if your uh, car comes factory with that package on it, where all you have to do is hit the defrost, uh, the rear defogger, and the engine bay lights will come up. Well, here's the thing with that. It's a good little thing. Um, I like everything that Paragon sells. They sell good stuff. They sell high quality things. I like all their products. Anything that I've gotten from them, I, I really liked. Um, so, but this little clip that they have, it's a little piece of connector and it's like 75 bucks. So if you really want to do it, and if you're, if you're kind of not willing to spend $75 on something like that, really all you gotta do is go to this connector right here and you'll see that there's three wires in here, okay? There's a black wire and then there's a brown wire with a purple stripe. And then there is a white wire with a purple stripe. Well. The black wire is obviously your ground, and everything else is grounded otherwise too. That big, uh, the thicker of the two, the brown wire, that's for your rear defroster, your rear defogger. That's your power wire for it. And the purple with a white stripe, that is your uh, engine bay lights. So they come from two different sources, really. But if you want to like get the same connectivity, all you have to do is take that wire right there, the brown one, and then the white one, both with the stripe. And just jump it you can make a little jumper harness and stick it in there and tape it up or whatever or if you want to cut it up which i wouldn't recommend doing you can make that all you're doing is is jumping those wires together don't i wouldn't say cut any connections but you ultimately have to have everything because otherwise you won't have anything that works but if you just jump that right there it'll work just the same now keep in mind that thing only works when the actual engine is running so i mean 
for whatever reason you want to drive around with the engine bay lights on while the rear defogger is on while you're driving around then so be it but if you wanted to do a little gimmicky little hack you can do that honestly though if it's me i'm going to spend the 75 dollars and buy the piece from paragon it doesn't alter anything it doesn't cut anything up it's a quick super easy install and like i said anything that you get from paragon is going to be high quality and it's going to be good um like i said i'm a big fan of theirs they don't sponsor me or send me any free stuff or anything like that so i'm not you know this is bought or paid for by them i just genuinely like their stuff so just a quick little uh extra little tidbit so i'm going to go ahead and reconnect that so that way i have everything and then to get this little cover back in all you have to do is take that hook hook it in first and it just snaps right in that's it so once all that is in again run over everything and just make sure everything is uh, all lined up and good Okay, and then take your weather stripping here and make sure that this is on the uh, top of the pieces that you have here. So it runs all the way down and you should be good to go. Oh, and I forgot to film it before too. Don't forget to reconnect this speaker too before you put that panel back in if you disconnected it. So reconnect the speaker first and then line everything back up the way I did just before. And again, once you move on to this, your waterfall, bring that back up, reconnect that speaker right there, flip it in, and then all these panels, all these clips just clip right in. And then your center cover. There you go, all back together. Now there is another way for you to pass wires from the passenger compartment into the engine compartment if this is if that last procedure is a little bit too involved for you. Now this is going to be a quicker, easier way to do it, but I will tell you right now, I do not advocate this way. I don't like it. I'm not telling anybody to try it. But, you know, hey, it's your car, you do whatever you want. And here's the way you can do it. It is a lot easier, um, but um, it's not going to be professional by any means. So, uh, if you look on the side over here, if you have the rear compartment open, you have this little panel right here, okay? Now, you might be wondering what that panel is for, and uh, I'll show you on the other side since I already have it off, okay? So, now, if you go to the other side of the car, excuse me, Ellie. I already have it off right here and it's just four uh, T15 screws that hold it on. It's just right there, okay? Now you might be wondering what the heck is that for? Well, it's for the seat belt, okay? So the seat belt on the car, the actual mechanism itself sits behind that, uh, uh, the panel that we just took off on the other side over there, right behind there. Now to get that off, there's that one bolt that holds it in there. Anybody who's ever taken a seat belt out knows it's usually like a T50 bolt. And it's usually very, very, um, it's very strong. It's very high torque. So to get it out, it takes a lot to get it out. So you're not really going to have a lot of room to swing a tool in there to get it out. So what they did was they made this little access panel right here. So if you look down here, you can look straight down. And there is the bolt for uh, the seat belt. So if you have to get the seat belt out, that's how you would get it out. Okay, it's right there. So it's straight down and easy to get to. Now... That is inside the patient compartment right there, that little panel. So if you really want to run wires up through there, you can just take that little panel that's right here and make some kind of hole in it or something or drill a hole, which I'm not advocating. I'm not a fan of. Um, I've never been a fan of anything like that. But again, hey, it's your car. You do whatever you want. So if you have that you can run that wire out here and it'll come down here and you can then run it along however you want to get it into the engine compartment right here now i have the uh engine cover off right here i have it on that side i'll show you something else here in a second so you can do that and you can run it on that side but then you also have this little hole right down here a lot of people are going to be tempted to just run the wires down to that hole right here so that way all you would have is just exposed wiring just right here now keep in mind too when you close the hatch um, it is going to rub a little bit it's not going to like crunch it completely but it is going to rub a little bit so that's your first problem and that's another reason why i wouldn't go for it but then here's your other thing this hole right here this is a drain hole so that way whenever it rains the water runs down and it goes down that hole so that way water doesn't build up now 
just to show you where it comes from it does come out and you can run things through there so if you're just going to put something in temporarily or something that's how you want to do it then okay that's not a thing so here's just a little uh, piece of a coat hanger i have left over it's an old makeshift tool i made for something else years ago so if i stick that tool down that hole right down there i'll show you right here where it comes out so you can kind of see see if i can find it here See, if you look down there, there it is. There's that white um, piece of metal. It's made from a coat hanger that I just stuck right through. You can kind of, I'm moving it right now. You can see that's where it comes out on the other end. So it's in the top right there. And there it is, came out all the way through there. So you can run it through there and run it up and over. Again, I don't like the idea of running anything right there. It's just going to look tacky and look odd. And it's not secure or really proper by any means. So, but again, your car, you do whatever you want. So there you have it. There's your two ways, ultimately two ways to get wires into the engine compartment. Again, I don't know why you would want to run anything back there. The only thing I can really think of is that guys that maybe go to car shows or something that are running extra engine bay lights or whatever. Um, we really haven't gotten to the point or anything yet where you have to run anything else into the compartment of the car or if you are you're, you're probably doing something so heavy duty that you know you're doing some other like big repair where the whole engine might be coming out anyways so um those are your two ways to do it the first way is more the proper way please whenever you're doing it be careful secure everything properly um, whenever you're running extra wiring anything like that you're always going to want to run protections on them fuses relays also too um and uh, just be careful with what you're running again if you don't know what you're doing don't do it um the other way that I showed you kind of through the uh, second second way is not something I would advocate doing. To be honest with you, I don't even know why I'm putting this information up. But again, you know, I just like to give people information and they can do with it whatever they want. Maybe that showed them something else that they were trying to figure out and they inadvertently stumbled across some information that they needed to know. So, but um, anyways, I hope this helps. Um, I don't know what else to tell you about it. Just be careful and uh, hope this helps. Good luck.